Hey, good morning, everyone. It is the first trading session of October. Here now is Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. All right, Jim, obviously it's tough to follow the markets given right. what the tragedy in Las Vegas. Yeah, I mean, I, I look, I think that what happens in these kinds of things is that it, it, it's subdued, but at the same time that it's subdued, there are people on trading desks all over the country who say, look, I, it's subdued, but I've got to uh, position myself. Uh, uh, the position that I see, by the way, is that all the stay-at-home stocks and, and Amazon uh, Domino's are doing well, and, and, and that's because people feel that there will be some change of behavior after this. Uh, historically, that has not been the case, uh, but I understand the desire to try to take advantage of, of what people see and believe that uh, something like Mandalay Bay will uh, make it so that you don't go out as much. Hmm. Well, and we're also seeing some of the gun stocks rise. Well, there, I mean, what's happened historically is is that people feel that when there's a tragedy, uh, that there'll be uh, a, something that comes out of Washington that makes it so that it's more, more difficult to get to buy a gun. I would say that after Sandy Hook and a Democratic president, nothing happened. So um, that is not a reason to buy the stocks. I would um, sell the stocks. Mm. All right, Jim, it's obviously a tragedy. We'll continue to watch it. Let's move on, though. It is the first trading session of October, and great timing because you have a fantastic real money column. Thank about you. 12 sectors that everyone should really be watching. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, there's just a head of steam in a lot of different areas. Now, oil, by the way, is not one of them. That There was a head of steam going in for oil, and we talked about this with my Action Alerts team for the club mm -hmm. this morning, and here oil hit 52, and once again, the oil companies came in and sold uh, a, a ton of futures, but the transports are amazingly strong, the housing, auto, and so what's happened is is that you had a thesis going into the quarter, uh, and even the last month, that we were at peak auto, and that we were peak housing, peak transport, and it everything changed, I think, because of Houston and Florida, and I think that people have underestimated Houston and Florida, underestimated the rebuild, underestimated the amount of resources that go into it and uh, underestimated how the population in Houston is different from the population in New Orleans where there's uh, much more insured and uh, the damages uh, are uh, very um, oriented towards auto uh, so and oriented towards fixing houses so you're seeing all the stocks that do well uh, in that situation really flying and that's not going to stop that's going to continue well, and you also mentioned the bank stocks in your column, and you point out this interesting timing that earnings are next week for banks, which is after that critical jobs number on Friday. Yeah, I mean, you know, the jobs number is going to be able to be subject to a lot of interpretation, given what happened in Houston and what happened in Florida with the storms. I think that the interpretation will be that the economy is strong, and if the economy is strong, then I think it will make it even more likely that we get the December rate increase. If we get December rate increase, then the banks, if they get hit, you want to buy. Uh, Wells Fargo will be... Uh, testifying tomorrow, Tim Sloan in front of Congress, and I'm not, a, I, I happen to recognize a stock that does well here. We own City for the club, and that's been terrific, but I think Wells could go up, JP Morgan go up, Bank of America's been going up, and uh, there were a bunch of downgrades today. Of, there were some, a downgrade of regional banks. I think that that's a, a downgrade that I would not do. I think the regional banks, which were red hot going into this quarter, will stay red hot. Hmm. Staying with the financial sector, AIG is stripped of its systemically important label. Any reaction there? Yeah, I mean, there. I mean, AIG is an inexpensive stock, and it's going to save $100 million. Uh, it is interesting to note that AIG is the only insurer that really hasn't done well here, mm. and that the strongest insurer-related stocks are Marsh Mac, mm. uh, Aon, uh, Gallagher. These are brokers. The insurance brokers are very strong. That stands to reason, given the fact that uh, of the storms. Uh, and I think that... I uh, progressive rates are going to go higher there. So I, I think that the insurers remain one of the great groups of this year. Hmm. All right, meanwhile, NVIDIA's price target was raised at SunTrust. No surprise to club members. No, uh, now NVIDIA reaches 180 and there's just a wall of selling every hmm. time the stock gets to 180. And it's funny, there's a wall of selling at TJX at 74. I mean, there's a lot of stocks that really get stopped at, at particular levels. And I think that NVIDIA is going to have to have far more buying power to get through 180. Huh. And do we get there? I think you maybe have to wait for the quarter. Hmm. 
Okay, Jim, uh, some good news for you as an LT subscriber, Disney uh, reaching a deal right. with the Campbell that, Company. I thought that was, I mean, I use uh, Moffat Nathanson. They were very bullish on Disney. I, I happen to think this is a very important call for Disney. I think that Disney, at a certain point, is going to, uh, all the different methods that you're going to use to get Disney programming are going to kick in. Maybe it'll be less of a focus, uh, the subscriber numbers. So I think that this was a clarion call to buy Disney, but longer term, I've never wavered. I think right. that Disney's an inexpensive stock longer term. Yes. All right. And Jim, Pepsi was downgraded at Jeffrey's. That's a club name. Yeah. Look, I mean, I we, we trim PepsiCo. and It doesn't matter. We're not going to get rid of PepsiCo. We understand the group is challenged, um, but this is the strongest of the consumer packaged goods companies, and I feel like that after it gets hit, no matter what, you know, if they report and people are, are critical of it, it will bounce faster than all the others. And while we're talking about Pepsi, remind us of your view of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is just I mean, neither here nor there. I mean, I think that if yields, if Treasury yields go up, then Coca-Cola is uh, less useful. I do think Coca-Cola would be wise to buy uh, Monster, mm -hmm. even though Monster's moved a lot. It's like I wish Allergan would buy Align Technology, <laughs> Align being the a company that would take care of the teeth so they'd have the whole face. Uh, obviously, Align's very expensive. Monster's very expensive. But what we're, what we've seen is that the companies that have made big acquisitions uh, in the, this year have done quite well. Mm. Uh, even United Technologies, it, stock is now at 116. It, it got hammered down to 109 when they bought Rockwell Collins, one of the bigger gains mm. of the third quarter. Uh, you know, so the, the companies that make acquisitions are doing well. Uh, I just think that the monster is a natural acquisition. Coca-Cola says it wants to be even bigger in beverages. I don't know how else to be bigger except for buying Constellation. Constellation is not for sale. They report this week. Uh, also reporting earnings on Tuesday is Lenar, and we of course talked a little bit about housing. Yeah, the earnings. housing business. Now there's a Florida-based home builder. I don't know what they can say, but I think that we saw really good numbers from KB Homes last week and that accelerated everything. What was really kind of interesting was that KB Homes has been having good numbers over and over and over again ever since we recommended it at 14. And, and yet f suddenly it matters. It, it's almost as if the analysts who had been uh, denigrating the stock for so long are now on board. And, and it just shows you once again, be patient when you have a really good stock. And Jim, before we end, uh, tonight on Mad Money, you have the Haynes Celestial CEO. Yeah, and, and you know what? A lot of people feel Haynes for sale. I think we're gonna find out it's not for sale. Uh, and, and Haynes going to be trying to rebuild its earnings profile. Let's listen to what Erwin Simon has to say. Perfect timing for that interview. Jim Kramer, thank you. thank you so much as always. We'll leave it there. All right, for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.